All right, guys, we got the Camaro moved out. As you can see from these doors, they do have some little bit of rust bubbling. So we do have a new pair of doors here. Um, as you can see from that gap, these don't fit terrible as far as the gap. They get a little tight in the bottom, but I think someone put a patch there before. And as you can see, it stick, definitely sticks out at the bottom. So uh, we're going to go ahead and pull these doors off because we do have our new set of AMD Direct doors to go on and new door hinges too. So we're going to get these pulled off. We might throw the new, new doors on right now just to check fit, or we might go ahead. Um, we we're going to clean all of this jam up the cow piece and when we uh, spray the underneath we're just gonna go ahead and spray this as you can see guys we got the doors off and uh, we also got the dash piece prepped we got it all ground down we got some weld through primer sprayed on it uh, along with the dash itself there's like the windshield area and the dash itself we get ground down a little bit a little bit of weld through and uh, we're getting ready to drop that cap on there and get it clamped up, get some welding, get it welded back on there. Um, again, we have the doors off. We do need to prep all this stuff. I'm still unsure whether I'm gonna throw the doors on right now and see how well they fit in case we have to do any modification or if I'm gonna get that all prepped and then throw them on. Um, that way, if they are decent and can be left on uh, we can just leave them on but we'll see so we have the doors off <clears throat> we went ahead and pulled the boxes out our new doors are in let's pop them open and see how they look i'm sure they're amd they're going to be pretty nice but there's only one way to find out how they fit they package them pretty nice they have these uh end caps of course bubble wrap keeps them up off the edges of the box pretty nice so let's get one pulled out and uh look it over and see how it looks and there is our what is that driver's side door it's the whole shell of course <clears throat> complete replacement door and so far it's looking really good uh, the stamping is nice and crisp and clean um, this edge isn't like really rolled over or the, the edges here are nice and crimped um, some of the cheaper doors you'll you actually get uh, they roll these over of course but they don't they don't make them tight so the edge of the door is actually kind of thick and the, the corner here is nice and sharp of course we'll probably end up having to work some of this stuff a little bit but so far it looks like a really nice start and of course like I said it, it is the complete shell it's the complete replacement for it all the inner structure of course they're bare so you have to change over everything from your other doors or you're going to replace it all but um, that is the complete sheet metal shell of the door and so far it looks really really good not really surprising but uh won't really know how it fits until we get it on the car um, the old doors like i said fit pretty nice uh, the ba the bottom corners were popping out, but they also had rust in them, and I, I suspect probably an old patch in them. So let's get uh, we do have new hinges too. So let's get the hinges bolted to the door. We we still have to do a little cleanup on the cow and the door pillars. We're gonna get that all sanded down. Might as well do it now, and then we'll get these doors. There's our hinges over there. We'll get them all mounted up, throw them up on the car. So once that weld through primer is nice and dry, we'll start uh, positioning this dash piece and clamping it on. As you can see, you can get underneath and clamp pretty much all the way through there. Uh, we have some, some of these clamps with the pads uh, that, that we can get kind of straight on. And then we'll have uh, a longer pair to go in the spots that we can't reach. So uh, pretty much it, it kind of, I mean, you can put it wherever you want, but it kind of uh, locates itself because it comes up. The obviously you can't be up on these ridges, so we got to be far enough back to it clears them. Same with over here and here, but there's also this is where your glass sits and seals to, and then that transitions right over onto this piece, 
and then of course up through here. So your glass seals right through here, around, and up through here. So as you're positioning it, you gotta pay attention to that. Um, this this will get filled in with seam seal, and then the the sealant for the glass. Originally, it was like a um, uh, caulk rope caulk, but uh, most people use urethane now. But anyway, uh, this has to be kind of on the same plane. So obviously, we don't have that all the way pulled down. But if you look on there, this is gonna come over and come right over on the here. Uh, this does dip down so we can push down in there clamp it really nice and get it welded in good there And like I said, it'll get seam sealed. Uh, it's got two tabs one here And one here that will get pushed over and welded to the a pillar and then of course on the inside <clears throat> We'll position all this stuff and get the dash Resecured back on there all the way across and get that welded through so that's a big improvement. The factory piece that was on here, <clears throat> someone had put some body filler in there and it just made it deteriorate really bad. Um, but this is a vast improvement. Uh, that's very common on the first generation Camaros for this piece to rust, probably because of the windshield leaking and holding moisture. Of course, you have your chrome trim there, your cowling that comes up. So let's go ahead and uh, get some more clamps on here, get some holes drilled. And we'll start welding this in. We'll get our process started with some holes drilled. We'll go ahead and start plug welding. Uh, we'll start right there, work our way across kind of on either direction. Um, you you want to be careful. I mean, this lays pretty flat all the way across. If you had any kind of uh, hump or anything in it, you want to start in the middle and make sure you didn't work yourself into a corner. Like I said, this one fits pretty nice the whole way across, so we can just kind of continue with that. So we got those plug welded up. Uh, chances are, that, like I said, this metal is pretty thin. It's thin from the factory, but it also was kind of damaged from before. So chances are you're probably going to blow through um, as you're welding. But that's all right. You can just take your time and puddle that up and fill that hole right up. And that'll join both of these pieces of metal right together. So we have that. Now we can start unclamping and spreading out either way. Like I said, working that way and that way. We're probably going to start going this way first. Um, we have all this free space here, so we'll just kind of continue our way over. Now, obviously you don't want to do this while these are still hot. I'm touching them, so they're just barely warm at this point. But if you have any uh, question on whether you're getting good penetration, once they cool down, you can feel underneath with your hands and actually feel the weld going right through. So we're, we're nice and strong there. Uh, it's it's not going anywhere. We have these two pieces of metal permanently joined together with uh, these plug welds. Another thing to watch uh, as you're going along and uh, you got this clamped up and you're getting ready to drill your holes, feel underneath because there are some factory voids. Uh, there's some like oval holes that GM put in this panel. I'm not sure why they put them there, but they did. Um, so just feel underneath before you drill like right in between these two clamps is a void and it's factory So we'll have to skip that section um, Hit this section over here Then we'll move that clamp and then hit a couple probably pretty much where these two clamps are um, We did get one there, but just feel along your way like right here's another one Right here's another one so like I said, as you go, you can just feel your way up under there and um, make sure you're not drilling into nothing really. So you just you would just be drilling this top piece of sheet metal, the replacement sheet metal, and not hitting anything underneath. So it wouldn't benefit you from drilling and welding there. All right, we've got the dash all completely welded. Our normal way of drilling and plug welding uh, around the edges, the factory. Uh, put some weld there anyway, so we just filled that in like I said it, it will get seam sealed through here kind of fill that void in um, our our line here for our window Windshield is looking good on both sides Once we get that filled in it comes right around um, We got these tabs welded on and if you look on the inside We've got this corner welded 
this, and of course through there. With this, I just kind of tack it right on the outside, makes it nice and strong, and as you can see, here's part of the bolt holes and the other uh, tabs go up top here. So your dash pad covers that whole area. We didn't leave enough there to uh, overlap and plug weld. So we just tack weld it back together. Same with here. Now that is nice and sturdy and uh, it's ready to be ground down and just finished off with some seam seal. Looks much, much better. All right, guys, we are in the Camaro here, back to work on it. Um, we're going to finally get these seat platform seat risers installed. Uh, we have all, all of our seam seal. Let me pull this up. So all that's seam sealed. So now we can go ahead and lay these in. And as you can see, these were already pre-installed. Um, they come welded to the floor. This is the brace for the subframe. Here's the the cage nut where the subframe bolt comes up through. So these were already pre-installed. Quite honestly, it does look like it's twisted a little bit, but um, when you lay these in, but also we're gonna be welding through here and also through here. So we, get, we have to keep that in mind. When we lay this in here, this thing will center itself. Obviously, we can't really twist this in the floor too much because it's got all this surface area to line up on. Um, could this be bent a tiny bit? Yes, but uh, we did tweak the, the flanges over a little bit to avoid that. It's sitting flat on the floor, and as you can see, we pull it back and it stops flat. Uh, our hole is pretty much lined up for our uh, subframe mounting. The bolt will come up through just a tiny bit, and that's just clearance for it. Um, but if, as you can see right here, we're nice and tight here. And as we come over, this is actually recessed back a little bit. It shouldn't be any big deal. Um, hopefully that all lines up when, when we bolt the subframe in, but I'm pretty confident it will. There's quite a bit of movement in the cage nut. Um, and this seat platform, uh, there's plenty of lip to still weld there and up here, and then we'll weld back through here. So let's finish getting this mocked up. Like I said, you put it in and slide it back, and it pretty much centers itself, positions itself, as long as these are relatively um, in the right spot. The um, pieces that were already welded to the floor, um, we should be golden. Um, both sides seem to be real close to where they need to be when we line everything up. That side actually fits a little bit nicer. So uh, the first step is going to be running a couple screws down through and pulling this nice and tight. And these are pretty heavy steel. And then that support is fairly heavy steel. And then we're going to the floor pan also. So we got quite a bit of thickness of metal to drill through. Um, I'll probably put a screw here, screw here, maybe one in the center to keep this sucked down nice and tight and flat. And then we'll drill in between like we always do and plug weld it up. All right, we were able to get three bolts or screws down through there, pull that down nice and tight. We drilled all the way across evenly through there, around this side, and even around the back side here, as you can see. Now this isn't pulled down tight yet. We'll work on that, but it does push right down into place. So what we're, what we're going to do is actually weld across the front here so we where we know it's pulled down nice and tight. We'll transfer some of those screws through here and then we'll kind of jump across the screws and plug weld all that up making sure the floor pan and the seat platform stay nice and tight together and just work our way right on around. It's looking good though. Now it's time to plug weld these. We did get our little mini back here and suck up all those shavings so we can have a nice clear view of all those holes and how to plug weld them. Um, it keeps it sanitary in here too. You don't have metal shavings everywhere. You clean it up as you go. Let's get these plug welded up. Quick update here. We got welded all the way across there, across here, and we're starting to go across the back. And again, we're just kind of, uh, we got three in each one of these ribs here, we have three spots drilled and uh, we have a, a screw down 
through this kind of the center of each spot. So on the sides were nice and tight, uh, kind of the same way coming down through here. And we obviously still have to pull that down this side here. So it's <clears throat> really, really strengthens this floor up. Adds a lot of structure to it. Um, so you definitely want to make sure you get your plug wells nice and solid. Let's continue on. We're getting pretty close actually to finishing this up. We still have to drill and plug weld on this back support here, through here, which will further strengthen that whole piece. But uh, let's finish it up this side. We'll tackle that and then get our side pieces here. We got this 100% fully welded across the front, across the side, across the back the tabs on the sides, one up front, and across this section here too. And you would not believe how much difference that makes in the strength of the floor of this car. Um, again, that's it. this is the seat riser platform, but it also strengthens the floor tremendously because right here is where the subframe bolts on um, in the back. So one per side, and of course uh, at the firewall is the other two mounting points. But uh, yes, this, this really, really strengthens the structure of this car. So now time to tackle that side. It's pretty much the same. Probably won't record much. Um, same procedure as this side. And we got this side completely welded up too. Got it to fit down there nice and snug, just like this other side. So now we are gonna actually jump over and work on this back package tray. We drilled a couple more. We had this welded on before. We drilled a few more, and uh, Tex or Detroit Speed rather gives you these pieces. You do have to bend them. <clears throat> Excuse me, and they go on roughly like that. They get they get put on, um, welded into the inner wheel well, the mini tub, and then of course into the package tray right here. So we'll get it clamped up, get that put on, get that welded and then move over to the other side. We're moving right along, trying to tie up all the loose ends on this. We have the, the trunk latch support all cleaned up, straightened out, um, ground down. We have holes drilled through here and we have it loosely clamped in place. Now this thing does have to line up, as you can see from the inside here. Um, it needs to be pulled over a tiny bit twisted a tiny bit. It's got to line up on this hump here for the uh, gas tank filler tube. But it also has to line up with the keyhole. So if you look straight in there, that's that rectangle piece right here needs to be lined up because that's where your key goes through and there's a lever or a bar, a flat bar that goes through and turns that latch mechanism inside here. So, and of course, there's a little bit of play here, but you have to be real close. There is an adjustment too, left and right. Um, but definitely make sure you get that as close as you can. Like I said, you can eye it up through that keyhole into the, the mechanism, and that'll get you real close. Once we get this tacked up, um, we'll pull the bottom over just ever so slightly, just so it lines up and it's evenly spaced around this tunnel here. We're test fitting here. To operate that, you can take a flat screwdriver, put it through there, and turn that, and that will release the mechanism. But we're just uh, checking fit here, make sure, making sure we have that latch real close. And as you can see, it latches right down. So we're good there. There we go. We did get one spot welded once we uh, had it what we thought was close. So now we'll go ahead and <clears throat> clamp that back up, get the rest of these zipped up, and then uh, get our back here. And that'll, that'll take care of our trunk latch. Um, we did get our stand here, our little support welded in. Goes over to the corner of the quarter, and that's where your bumper end bolts onto. So we got that all welded up also. Uh, just trying to button up all the little loose ends here. It's coming together really nicely though. Got that all welded up nice and tight. Now we're definitely, we're secure. The whole back panel is now fully secured. And again, the trunk lid shuts nice. 
It doesn't have the weather stripping on it, of course, so it does have a little play. It gets bumpers on either side and the weather stripping tightens it up nice, but uh, it latches nice. This is uh, actually not the trunk lid we're going to use and we, we have another one over there in that crate and we should probably get that one on here and fine tune any of the metal work that needs to be done. Um, this one fit with these quarters decently, so I left it on there and uh, just made sure it went back exactly the way it was. And then we'll get the, the trunk lid, the, I think it's all the metal direct. It's, this is an old, this is not GM. This is an old one, uh, old replacement. And if you run your hand across it, just it's, it's terrible. Um, it's up and down and all over the place. So let's get the, get the correct one on and then we'll fine tune everything. So there is our new trunk lid, 67 through nine trunk lid is all the same, actually hard top or convertible. So um, yeah, it's one trunk lid for all of them. And it is an auto metal direct AMD and they're usually pretty nice. So let's get this open and throw it on. We did get our old one removed here a while and let's check fit. We got our trunk lid out of the box and man, what a difference. If you rubbed your hand around this, it is just laser straight. I'm sure you start block sanding it, you'll find some highs and lows, but compared to the old one we just took off, it is new. It's just an older replacement of unknown uh, manufacturer. This is way, way better. Even the weight of it, it's got a nice weight to it. So let's get it fold it on here and uh, see how it fits all right we got the trunk lid test fit on here we got roughly where we need it to be we just went ahead and removed the trunk latch plate that gives you a full it, it the trunk latch doesn't move it anyway so you can shut it and open it obviously without it moving so that's not dedicating where the trunk you really need to adjust the hinges before you adjust that. So anyway, that gap is actually really nice. Um, the quarter does, uh, it's pretty common. They, they flare in right at the edge here. So we'll have to address that. You might even have to shave that, uh, shape it and re-weld that corner. Um, it actually comes down and out towards the trunk lid. Um, kind of the same thing with this side. It's not as bad. Uh, trunk lid could probably come over this way a tiny bit. And again, we don't have our bumpers or latch or anything, so we gotta kinda push it down. But that gap isn't horrible. This side's a little bit nicer, but if we split the difference there and bring it over, it's not bad at all. This front corner is actually pretty nice. That's a lot of times a problem on these cars. And this side is a problem a little bit, so it'll definitely have to be worked. If you can, if you can see uh, the rear deck, it's got an even gap. It's a little bit wide. It's got an even gap over, and then the quarter really juts in. So that'll have to be reworked here. Um, you can actually see it. It's not the trunk lid. It's more the quarter. So that's the way it was when it came in, and um, it'll have to be worked. I'm not sure if we're going to do that if the body guy will. But overall, this fits extremely well. There we have it on there and pretty well adjusted. Like I said, it'll need some fine tuning with metal work, but it fits absolutely beautiful in my opinion. I've fit, I bolted a lot of these on and this one probably fits the best. So, and it, it closes, let's pop it open here real quick. It pops too and clicks right down. Of course, we don't have our weather stripping, so you have some play there. It's very common. And we don't have our bump stops or bumpers either. There's a bumper that goes here, and of course, one that goes here, and then the weather stripping goes through here and it fills all that gap in. But it's installed and it fits beautiful. Next on the list is gonna be uh, refit these trunk uh, hinge supports to the inner fenders or the mini tubs now. Um, they would go to the stock inner fenders, and obviously now they're a little too tall. Um, they're made to go on the inside here. So we have to modify them slightly so they fit 
flat on the, the mini tub. And then if you can see on the inside, they're well too tall, pretty, pretty well too tall um, because it gets moved up as you move it with the factory one. As you can see, it fits pretty nice on the, the edge of it here, but uh, we're way too far over to hook. So once we slide over, we have to modify this, bend it around a little bit, no big deal, and then trim off the top. So we can put this, put this in here, uh, work our flanges so they fit flat on the wheel tub. And then once that's good, we can mark here and then just measure up like an inch, inch and a quarter, and trim these things off and then we'll be ready to go as far as welding them back on. Let's work on that a while. We have both sides to do. Still have to clean it up a little bit, or the welds, like everything else. We'll grind them smooth, um, but we're nice and strong, both sides. This one, I have a tiny bit more welding, but unfortunately I ran out of wire on the welder, so we need to make a trip, to pick up some supplies. Um, but we got it welded on. It's definitely secure.